The Wagner Ranch is a historic North Texas ranch located 13 miles south of Vernon, Texas. It was originally established in 1852 by Daniel Wagner under the name Dan Wagner and Son, his son being William Thomas Wagner. When W.T. Wagner became the rancher, he struck it rich when they discovered oil on his property. As a result, he built an office in Fort Worth where the oil business was booming. The W.T. Wagner building sits on 810 Houston Street in downtown. When the building was constructed, it was one of the tallest in the state of Texas, and the southwest region for that matter, sitting at 230 feet from the year 1920 until 1921. The building was set to be 16 stories, with an architectural building addition plan to have an optional four stories above that. At the time, the demand for more office space was certainly there as Fort Worth continued to grow with oil money. And you guessed it, W.T. Wagner had the additional four stories added. Some say the actual truth to adding the additional four stories was to out skyscrape a building that was being built at the same time. Where might you ask that building was? In Dallas. The U-shaped portion of the building on the upper floors was unique to its architecture and was one of the few buildings to Fort Worth that oriented their light well towards the front of the building, making it a unique design feature. It's one of the few early skyscrapers with its original banking lobby intact. When it was constructed, the building also had an artesian drinking well, and that well water is actually still used today. In 1995, Cross Timbers Oil Company purchased the W.T. Wagner building. Later in 2001, they changed their name to XTO Energy. Here at the corner of 5th and Main Street in downtown Fort Worth is one of Fort Worth's last existing Art Deco influences. The Sinclair Building, named after Sinclair Oil Company, whose business operations in the southwest were operated out of the top seven of the building's 16 floors. Though the building was originally constructed in 1929, its history arguably began in 1911. That's the year the vast mineral deposits were discovered in Ranger, just west of Fort Worth. And because Fort Worth was already an established railroad hub at that time, it made the city an especially lucrative place for oil and gas companies to locate their southwestern operations. Here's uh, a few pictures of it, just in case you've never walked by. The Fort Worth oil boom brought new industry. Of course, the new industry meant the need for new office buildings. Consider this. When looking for spaces to, find, to locate their new office buildings for oil and gas operations, the city of Fort Worth actually demolished the first bank ever incorporated here, Tidball and Wilson. The Sinclair building cost about $750,000 at the time it was constructed, which today would come out to be around $10.3 million. Uh, this article refers to it as the Delaney building, and that's just because at the time it was written, uh, Sinclair hadn't yet closed its lease on the seven floors. Interestingly enough, Sinclair Oil didn't even own the Sinclair Oil building. The building's original owner, Richard Arnold Delaney, actually owned a different oil and gas company that competed with Sinclair. However, because of a special provision in the building's lease, as the main tenant, Sinclair had the naming rights to the building, hence the Sinclair Oil Building. The Sinclair Oil Building is a monument in Fort Worth's rich oil and gas history. How long it will remain a monument is yet to be told. In 2015, Marriott International contracted to have the Sinclair Building turned into a 165-room hotel. The famed statue, the Golden Goddess, which now resides at the Petroleum Club, was originally purchased by Benjamin Tiller in 1909 from Italy. He then placed it in the lobby of the Westbrook Hotel. Oilmen from across the country would flock to that lobby just to catch a glimpse. And those who happen to be superstitious embraced the tradition of rubbing its derriere for good luck. When the Westbrook Hotel was demolished in 1978, the statue was removed and was later purchased by the Petroleum Club in 2003. Her new owners made sure to take good care of her by restoring her with 250 sheets of gold leaf. 
They then proudly displayed her in their lobby so that a whole new generation of oil men could embrace their good luck charm. The Golden Goddess. May she again look down into the eyes of all who view her and bring good fortune. The story of the Golden Goddess brought from Italy in 1909 by Benjamin Johnson, Tiller, builder of the Westbrook Hotel. She made her debut, debut at the hotel's opening on December 15th, 1910, and became the queen and temptress of its lobby. Beginning in the discovery of oil on the McCleskey Farm near Ranger in October 1917, oil men packed its lobby and claimed her as their goddess. They rubbed her derriere for good fortune and pinned the following ode to her. Listen to me, you golden goddess, standing high on your pedestal. Hold high your torch, so high it can spread light. Into the black soil wilderness, where the drill boys dig deep holes for fortunes. Let me rub your derriere for luck, for courage, for bonanza. Look down into my eyes, golden girl, and bequeath me your favors in black and gold. What is the Barnett Shale? According to the Texas Railroad Commission, is a hydrocarbon producing geological formation that has led to great economic significance for the city of Fort Worth and the state of Texas. It's made up of sedimentary rocks and stretches to the city of Dallas West and South, making up about 5,000 square miles in about 18 counties. Some experts say that the Barnett is the largest natural gas formation in U.S. history. A quick bit of history, it was named after John W. Barnett, who settled in San Saba County in the 19th century, but it wasn't until the 20th century when a group of geologists were out on a mapping exercise and noticed a thick black organic rich shale in the outcrop close to the stream and named it the Barnett Shale. Some of the big pioneers for the Barnett, uh, most notable would be George Mitchell of Mitchell Energy. He's also considered the father of hydraulic fracking. It's important to note about hydraulic fracking that it was this that made it important for independent oil companies to have success in the shale. And it was these independent oil companies that had the first success in the Barnett that led to some of the larger players coming in. Some of these independent oil companies would be Four Sevens Oil, would be Hollis R. Sullivan, would be Trevor Reese Jones of Chief Oil and Gas. And all of these groups sold out to some of the larger names, Devon Energy, Pioneer, EOG, XTO, Chesapeake. And those larger names are still active in the shale today. However, it's important to note that right now with the gas prices the way that they are, none of these guys are drilling, but it's a production friendly uh, play right now only. And Chesapeake, while still very active, just sold out most of its interests to the French company Total, and they're active. EOG is still active, XTO, Devon, Range, uh, and Intervest. And while Range and Intervest were smaller than some of the aforementioned groups, they were still very noteworthy for the Barnett and are another group that has continued to be active. According to a study by the Perryman Group, since 2001, when significant development began on the Barnett Shell to 2014, the cumulative benefit was $110 billion in gross product and nearly 1 million person years of employment. This investment came through direct investment in production and exploration activity, as well as through royalties being spent. These dollars had a multiplier effect, which contribute to the prosperity of our region which can be seen through the success of developments such as the beautiful Sundance Square Plaza in our downtown. Despite the drop in oil prices in mid-2014, Fort Worth continues to expand. This is in large part due to the diversification of our economic base. We've seen growth in industries such as healthcare, IT, finance, and developments for large tech firms such as the Facebook Data Center. It is likely that oil and gas will always be more prominent locally than nationally, but Fort Worth will continue to diversify as it attracts corporate clients due to its central location in the United States, proximity to an international airport, low cost of living, and impressive pipeline of young leaders. <laughs>